The three basic deposits, and we're talking about low mining now, primary deposits, not secondary. There's only really three that you need to worry about. Porphyry deposit, mesothermal deposit, and epithermal. Most everything falls under that category. The porphyry deposits are really important. You got the ones that I like are the iron oxide, copper, gold deposits. I really like those. And you'll see a lot of those in Arizona. And, and then next you got mesothermal, which is your greenstone, your shear zone hosted, your arcane greenstones. A lot of your metamorphic folding like you have in California. Those are deep seated veins. That's all going to fall under your mesothermal category. And then, of course, you all know your epithermals. A lot of that's going to be shallow and next to a heat source, usually volcanic in nature. Uh, you see them a lot in Nevada. You got what's called back arc basin assemblages. And what will happen is, is you'll have these hot springs bringing this water up. Now, gold isn't soluble in just plain old water. It has to, like I said, it has to be in something that will dissolve it. And that's usually a chlorine base, like a brine solution, really salty, nasty stuff. Or a sulfur complex, like you have a lot of these high sulfidation zones. In your epithermals, you're going to get a lot of these vents that come out around these volcanoes. Remember I told you the magic number, which is 1, 3, 7, and 21. Those are the miles that you need to look at when you're looking on a topo map from most of these volcanic cones and shields and things like that. That's where you're going to find a lot of this mineralization. And that's why I always tell people, if you're looking for epithermals, look for low sulfidation, you're going to find your chunkier gold. And you got to remember when you're working with geology that everything didn't happen at one time. I mean, some of this stuff happened 3.5 million years ago. I mean, I got a whole bunch of basement rock underneath me right now. That's from the Precambrian time period. And then I got all this tertiary volcanics around here that happened maybe 10,000 years ago, or maybe a little later. On top here, I've got a lot of this pre site which is a volcanic and then i got basement rocks underneath here of of granitic gneiss and and i've also got some granite diorite down there too Ooh, isn't that pretty you've got a lot of these square holes in it and pitting i'd say that this had sulfides in it that oxidized out and left the manganese and the uh limonite behind which is hematite iron oxides well if you look carefully at this one i'll see if i can get it in there close for you these vugs are square all of them are square in nature and what does that tell you that means that there used to be what iron pyrite in there and what has happened is is it has oxidized out leaving just the iron and hopefully native gold behind now another thing i gotta cover real quick that you're not gonna read about is anytime you find veins like this look in the area to see if you got any veins that are running at a 45 or even a 90 from these i have found a lot of really rich mineralized veins that are running at a 45 degree angle of these like this or sometimes a 90 off to the side those will be the veins that are rich not these will you find one vein there's usually more in the area you just have to look it's a parallel vein and a lot of times you have swarms and then of course if you got thousands of them it's called stock works but anyway look at this i got that vein that i just chased but look at this right here it was right below the surface see that Look at that beautiful looking vein. Imagine how many people just walk right over the top of it. There must not be more than six inches of dirt sitting over the top of it. And I got tons and tons of magnetite. Magnetite can form in a replacement deposit, and that's always a good sign. I got copper staining too. And I got magnetite all up and down the side of this vein. And the vein I was just looking at, it's about 20 feet away, running up the side of the hill. And then there's another one that outcrops, and another one. There's parallel veins, and there's swarms. When you see quartz rock that has this really funky yellow, and sometimes it'll have a band of, of red around the outside. But when you see this really funky yellow, usually what that indicates, if you can see that, sulfides. That's the sulfur that's oxidizing off of that sulfide. See that? And if you look right in the middle, you can see what? That's right, sulfides. And when you break it open and sniff it, you'll smell the sulfur. So, so what I'd like to do is crush him up and see if there's anything in it. If you see a Gaussian like this, you gotta sample it. Now keep in mind, now a lot of the gold has been leached out of this thing so you're not going to get a lot of gold values but the deeper you go the better it's going to get so all you have to do is find a little bit of gold in this guy and you know down deeper you're going to hit the mother load just like they did out in vulture city look across the way there you see that those are volcanic plugs or necks same thing the rest of the center cones obviously weathered away and you see that black one over there basalt see that feeder dike coming right off the side and then you can see there's a volcanic neck and it's made out of what? Rhyolite, because it's a light color. And then the one next to it is basalt, because it's darker. Now this one's not even on any map. I just happened to be wandering out in the middle of nowhere and I stumbled upon some old diggings. Don't look like it was very profitable because the old timer stopped. But I'm gonna look at it, you know why? Because it might be profitable for me. And that's what you should do too. I got this huge dike running along the hill. 
And you see where it was exposed? You see all that manganese oxide on the outside? Then you get down in here where it hasn't been weathered so much. Ooh, and you can see the mineralization in there. See all that mineralization? And if you get a good look at this, you'll see what? Sulfides in the mix. That's why it's always important to look for these outcroppings. You'll have quartz outcroppings and rhyolitic outcroppings. So you gotta look at them, especially where old timers have been digging. Now I already saw sulfides in the mix. I already broke a chunk off and used my jewelers loop. And there's sulfides all through there. And I could tell too, just by looking at some of this rock that it's sulfide. You can... There's a good example right there. See that? So the red hematite, iron oxide. Then you got the yellows where the sulfur's oxidizing out. That's a dead giveaway right there. That's sulfides. You break it open, it just smell like sulfur. And that's like I told you, sometimes gold rides in sulfides, right? And this is what you should do too, is look for these little prospect pits that aren't in any maps. You go out and you prospect and you look around, you put them on your maps. It's important, why? Because if you happen to stumble upon bonanza type vein structure and the epithermal, remember low sulfidation, not high sulfidation, I'm gonna check his high grade, low grade piles. They're all over the place here. Now I'm gonna pull samples from that and then I'm gonna sample across the vein like I told you. Now take a look at this. I don't advocate getting close to these collars. This is a collar. That's a shaft, vertical shaft. You can see the hanging bolts down there. You see the hanging bolts, how they built this? And in one of my videos, I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? In case you wanna drop your own shaft. Well, I've got a whole bunch of shafts in the area. And you're thinking, Jeff, why the heck did they dig so many shafts? Was there one vein running this way? There's a whole bunch of parallel veins, and they knew that. So all they did was they were scratching the dirt, trying to find ones. And then what they do, they'd sink the shaft down here, and then they'd start drifting along. They got on the very end of the outcropping. They went down, come up underneath. There ain't a lick of mineralization in it. But when you get deeper, you're gonna find mineralization. Even though they're bare on top, most of the minerals have leached out. See all these little veinlets in here? And stringers? You get a lot of them, it's called stock works. It's when they just scatter throughout the whole rock. Now this is a fissure filled vein system. This used to be a whole bunch of fractures in this host rock, and then it got filled up with all this quartz when it was in liquid form. And it's solidified. And you can see it's all leached of any minerals it's got. See that? That's andesite. And what is andesite? It's an intermediate. It's extrusive as well. Came up real fast, cooled quickly, fine grain. It's parrot rock is what? It's diorite. Now it can come in all host of different colors. This one's green. I found a lot of gold in andesite that's got green in it. Now look at this. What's this? Looks like rhyolite to me. You can have sulfides and gold in this stuff. It's from granite. Granite's intrusive. Cools inside the earth. This stuff comes up fast, so it's fine grain. It's felsic, which means it's got what? A lot of feldspar, a lot of silica in it. And intermediates, like your andesite, and your mafix, like your basalt. Mafix meaning what? Magnesium and iron. And then, of course, you got ultra mafix. Look at this. Wow. For you out there that know what stamp mills are, you've probably never seen one like this. Now, instead of having the traditional stamps like you're used to, it's only got one big stamp in the middle, you see that? And then you've got one cam up above. So most of y'all are used to seeing banks of five, and that's how they normally are. You can see where you got your, this is the mortar, there's the bowl down there, and it just pounds the heck out of it, and then eventually it sloshes over, and then you'd have your what? Your copper sheets right here with your mercury on it. And of course, how does the ore get in there? See that automatic feeder in the back? Or sitting in the back. Of this ore chute right here, you see that? And then right here you got your, your gear mechanism. And then down here is the feeder trough and the plate that feeds to the back that goes into the very back of the stamp mill. Now the way it works is every time this stamp goes up and down, it hits what? This little guy right here, this little fork. See that? And the fork goes up and down, up and down every time this stamp goes up and down. And as it does so, this whole mechanism on this T-bar is connected to this guy right here. And it advances that gear one notch every time that stamp goes up and down. As it does so, it turns this. The ore sitting in here, comes through this little feeder, chunk, this whole plate's rotating, remember now, because it's connected to this. And it comes out, chunk, 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 chunk. And down inside it goes, son of Jim to get crushed. All right, so you got three different types of deposits. You got alluvial, which is this. You got alluvial, which is basically load gold that's broken off from the host vein and traveled down the hill. And then you have residual, which is basically the load that's broken free and it's still sitting there that has all that juicy gold in it. And you got two different types of gold. You got placer, which is secondary, and you got load, which is primary. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And look at all this. Nice material in there, see that? 
You can see where they were chasing the heck out of this. Little stringers of quartz, see that? See all this clay is material, see the quartz in there? And then here, look at this. Oh, that's pretty looking stuff, look at that. You got quartz, you got hematites in there, probably replacing magnetite. You got a little bit of sulfides in there, and you got free mill gold. That's how you do it. You crush it up as fine as possible, soak it in a weak solution of sodium cyanide. The cyanide becomes pregnated with gold, and then you either add zinc, or in today's world, you use activated carbon. I added some good looking schist. Looks like a mica schist. Sometimes you get some chloride in there too, and remember I told you about that. That's a really important part of the mix. And you can see where this was in the contact zone right here. See how nice and slick that is? I got rhyolite plugs all over the place. I got basalt plugs all over the place. I got a whole bunch of rhyolitic tuff that forms this whole section in the back here. That right there is brecciated rhyolite. It comes in all assortment of colors. You can see where it's sitting up against the, the wall rock right there, probably the hanging wall. It's usually a dike. It can be also come out some of these volcanic vents. And then when it cools and the surrounding cone is worn away, it leaves a plug there. So anyway, this is brecciated rhyolite because as you can see, it's got what? All these little tiny broken pieces in there, all cemented together with this. Anyway, I just thought you'd get a kick out of this because it actually had the smooth side where it was coming up through a fissure. And that's how dikes form. Usually there's a fissure and then you have some type of intrusive granite that comes up really, really fast. And as it comes up to the surface, it grain mass gets really, really small, the crystalline mass. Why? Because it cools really fast. It stays down in the earth a long time, crystallizes real slow. If it crystallizes real slow, it becomes what? Pegmatite. And I've got tons and tons of quartz here, and you can see a beautiful looking vein of it. That's a little stringer. Remember, you got stringers, you've got swarms, you've got veinlets. Remember that. You're gonna see that in your USGS reports. But that's what I want you to do when you come out to these old mining districts. Make sure it was free mill native gold that they were pulling out. You don't want sulfide. What's this black rock right here? It's called basalt and it's running up and down so that means it's what? A dike. So it's a basalt dike. And what's it cutting in? Andesite. Well, a fissure opened up in the andesite and then this stuff rushed up through the basalt did. Because it came out, it cooled fast. The crystalline ground mass in here is really, really small. It's real fine. Why am I showing you this? Well, I want you to understand it. This is considered a mafic rock. Mafic meaning what? Magnesium? and iron. Now, if it was granite, this would actually be rhyolite. If it was a dike, that would be felsic. Felsic just means feldspar and silica. You got two ends of the spectrum. Then you got intermediate in the middle. That's usually what andesite is. These are really, really important. And like I said, this is an extrusive rock. It's a mafic extrusive because it popped up into the surface and cooled rapidly. And of course, if it would have stayed inside the ground, it would have been gabbro and it would have been called an intrusive. So I want you to learn this stuff. It's real basic geology, but you got to know it because when you you start reading these USGS reports, that's what they're going to talk about. They call that a volcanic plug. What it is is the remnants of an old volcano. Most of the cone has already been eroded away. So if I had to guess, these are called what? Feeder dikes. And they usually come off of something like that. And they probably, instead of being parallel, they're radial. They, they come out in a circle around that guy. And you'll see that a lot when you start looking at some of these topo maps. Ooh, here's prospect hole right here. Look at that. And why do you suppose they're digging here? Well, it's simple. There's a contact zone right here. See that? So you have this hydrothermally altered hanging wall, and then you got this andesite free right here. You see that? This has been hydrothermally altered. Looks like propolite. You can see it right there too. It's really good. See how it's been altered red? Well, a lot of times in these contact zones here, you can have what? Mineralization form there that would have gold in it.